I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go in it. Turn away from it and pass on, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not they do not know over what they stumble. All right, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. This is a good morning. I like that standing for the reading. I appreciate Ethan asking us to do that. I almost sat down. I'm not used to it, um, but I appreciate that, Ethan, giving attention to the Word. A lot of good things going on this morning. I want to dive into this. I don't want to distract us from the, what John Austin just read too far. But I did want to mention there's a lot of great things going on today. And uh, one of them, especially uh, over at the Sumner County Jail this morning, uh, as of the last count yesterday at about 3 o'clock for me, uh, we had given out gifts to about 55 kids. Um, about, about 19 or 20 different uh, guests had come at that point, and there were several more after that. And then when I left this morning, uh, folks, uh, at least two families had started to come in. And so a lot of good things. And if that's a new, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, for a few years now, Old Union has really supported a ministry that helps um, families of the incarcerated be blessed during Christmas time. And so we've collected a lot of gifts. A lot of other churches, some schools, even some companies in town have supported that. Uh, yesterday, we not only did that, but we provided meals um, for the uh, officers, for the correctional officers on staff during both shifts. And then we'll, we'll provide meals for both shifts uh, Tuesday and Tuesday evening as well. And so um, just a lot of wonderful things and uh, God working in ways that some that we can see through that ministry, most that we'll never see. And so, um, or at least I think we might never see. But uh, I wanted to begin um, in prayer just one more time, uh, specifically for um, God to be glorified in that ministry and in that work today. So pray with me, then we'll jump back into the light of dawn. Okay, pray with me. Again, God, you're so good, and we thank you, and we praise you, and for opportunities that we have been blessed with uh, to give you glory. Um, it is so easy to try to consume your light for ourself, uh, to try to be people who give based on what others deserve, or who try to acknowledge our strength. Father, remove that from us. Uh, may you receive all glory and praise. Uh, may gifts, Father, to, to many who are undeserving, uh, be reflective of your grace to us, Father, who have received gifts as undeserving. And Father, we thank you for uh, servants of our community, for helpers and officers and staff that have been so good to us this week and these months in preparation for this. And Father, may they too just be so blessed uh, by what's going on. And, and for every child and family and, and Father, parent, just for, for everyone, um, I pray that every gift open, given, um, Father, again, is working for your glory. And so I don't know what that looks like. It's easy to get discouraged when we can't see it. Um, but Father, I just pray for your glory to stretch and to reach and to grow. And, uh, and I thank you for this congregation and the hearts here and the hearts of others in our community um, that just want to that just want to help others and praise you. And so, Father, we love you and we thank you. And for the strength and ability to uh, present your word well today, I also pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So. Uh, John Austin read for us from Proverbs. I like the Proverbs. This lesson is not really about the Proverbs today. Uh, we've spent some time on that in the past, you may recall. 
And I mentioned when we studied through some of the Proverbs that the Proverbs are this wonderful manual for wisdom. That's really what they are. And, and so often they're written literally as wisdom from a parent to a child. And so uh, I heard a guy one time say um, that it's an excellent um, uh, spiritual home manual. And that stuck with me, a home spiritual manual or something like that. That stuck with me. So anytime I read the Proverbs, I'm thankful for these lessons uh, to me as a child of God, but then help in, in for, for me as a leader of my family. And so literally, John Austin just read these words that, I don't know, they've penetrated me this week. I have a desire, uh, more than I can recall of recent, to just avoid wickedness. Um, and that's not necessarily indicative of anyone around me, just a desire for me personally to avoid wickedness, to avoid things that aren't of light and that, and that aren't good and that don't um, glorify God. And so I love these words that John Austin read, uh, indicating our need to avoid wickedness, but also our need to walk in the path of righteousness, uh, in the path of the righteous here. And then, you know, righteousness for me becomes a word that can be difficult to understand sometimes. It, you may be reading a Bible that says, walk in the way of the just, okay? But even that word, sometimes difficult for me. And so um, I appreciate the metaphor. All right, this is the beauty of the Bible so often, the beauty of the Proverbs, the beauty of the Psalms that we're studying on Wednesday. Sometimes we can't understand exactly what's going on. And so we get these pictures, these metaphors, all right, these images that help us. So this is what rightness is like, okay? This is what what God's way is like. This is what rightness is like. It's like a sunrise um, that penetrates the darkness. And it's like a sun that gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter as the day goes along. Okay? And so I can kind of get that. I can kind of grasp that. I'm, I'm thankful for the proverb writer here that indicated that, that walking in the path of righteousness is a journey. That, 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 that we grow in, you know, that grows brighter and brighter and brighter as we walk this path, as we, as we struggle to journey down this path of rightness, of seeking rightness, God's way, what is good. It's not easy, is it? And sometimes we feel that darkness more than others. But man, I appreciated this. And so let me try to draw it all together, okay? The father's child metaphor, the Jesus and rightness and sunlight this week, um, Something pretty big happened at home. Um, so Kelly and Amelia were talking. I wasn't home. This was the morning hour. I was away. And apparently, I, I, I like to tell these stories better when the girls aren't in here, by the way. Um, I didn't mean that really funny either. Like, uh, I don't want them to, to be uh, pressured as, the, as a preacher kid. But anyway, so Amelia is... Um, is asking Kelly, what if God is not real, essentially? And um, what if the Bible is just a storybook? And, um, you know, you, that, that might shock you to hear an eight-year-old say that. I'm, 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 I'm actually, I find myself thankful, though, to hear an eight-year-old say that, because I'd much rather, like, walk uh, with her at eight than I had try to walk with her at tw eight, 19 and 20 and 21, you know? Um, and so it didn't, it, it didn't, you know, we, we weren't upset or anything. Uh, Kelly handled it well, and then we, we all talked about it later at, uh, at the dinner table when I was at home. And, and all I found myself really being able to say is that, well, I'm anxious to, to study and meditate on the Word of God with you as, 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 as you grow. You know, I'm anxious to do that with you as we grow. And so look at the proverb again, you know. Um, you know, the path of rightness is, is, is a journey. Um, it's, like, it's like the dawn of light, if you will. And as you walk in that, you grow in it. And, you, and it. and it seems like, you know, we may not be able to call Proverbs, but don't we recall a psalm that says, Thy word is a what? Is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. I um, found myself incredibly thankful this week for light just as simply as that for light and and even lights especially like those in this auditorium that when you turn on they're dim but they grow brighter and brighter and brighter and when you're in this room in the in the in the Sunday morning 
when the sun is rising in the east and you see it, you know, it break through the windows, but then brighter and brighter and brighter. And so just incredibly thankful uh, for this. Um, and I was thinking about how light is so often used to give us encouragement and strength throughout Scripture. A light is so, in fact, you can check me on this, study this, and find out for yourself. But I would guess that light is probably the most used image or metaphor in all of Scripture. You know, maybe like a rock in, in, uh, among water, maybe that one's close too. We hear that one a lot, you know. But I would guess that light is probably the most used metaphor, light and darkness, you know, to help us distinguish between what is good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong, what is chaotic and what is peaceful, what is desperate and what is hopeful, you know, light and darkness. And, and that probably starts from creation. You know, I love when the story comes together, right? So the first words of your Bible, some of you have them memorized. They're really good to know. Uh, I, I have them. I always mess them up. I want to be able to speak Scripture to you guys, but I always mess it up. But in the beginning, right, God created the heavens and the earth. It's so good to try to put these things in your heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And I love this, but the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters. It was chaotic and formless and void. And our great God brings order and peace and structure and goodness. And God said, let there be light. Light was God's mechanism for penetrating darkness and bringing it into order. Light was God's initial mechanism. Now listen to this. His initial mechanism to bring his desire for mankind to fruition. He began it with light. What is his desire for mankind, kiddos? <laughs> for him to share himself with humans, with us, humans. It's different than other worldviews. I'm here today as a, as a believer loving the fact that we are the day six creation of God. Right? God began this, God's mechanism for establishing his plan for sharing himself with mankind began with what? Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, and it was good, and the darkness separated uh, the light, the, and, and God separated the light from the darkness. It's beautiful. And so establishes or begins. You count them, right? You're getting, if, if you're like me, you, you try to read your Bible every year you know I mean like you 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 do Bible reading things in January right some of you do that I encourage that by the way I encourage that there's a new app um, I'm gonna have to get a smartphone by the way sorry I'm gonna have to get one uh, this thing is falling apart um, but there's a new app one of the first apps I want to download is this Bible reading app that I've been looking at and I'll share that with you guys and it's only five books of the whole Bible for the whole year but anyway off track getting back on track um, read your Bible and see if light doesn't continually occur in Scripture as this metaphor for guidance and for hope and for goodness and for rightness. You see it and you find it. And you can probably, if you've been coming to church for any amount of time in your life, you can probably quote something, some Scripture with light in it. You probably can. You can probably think of one now. If you, have, if you need help, Ethan just sang songs that all involved light that come, most, a lot of them directly from Scripture. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven. What was the, se what was the second one you sang, Ethan? Uh, I think I, uh, shadows are uh, walking in sunlight. Thank you. Um, this verse, I fell in love with this verse this week, actually, Ethan, and then you picked it. Um, shadows around me. Yep. And shadows above me, yep. You ever feel that? Yep. Um, things get hard, you lose friends. Uh, death hurts people you love. Church is kind of weird right now. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. Amen. Amen. Because he is the light and him is no darkness. So I'm going to hang out by his side, right? Walking in sunlight. That's a good one. 
This is probably my most recent favorite, though, Light of the World. We got to learn some of these new songs. We got to get them. They'll bless us. Uh, I see God's purpose for making us in the first verse of Light of the World, or Here I Am to Worship. Ethan led that. So beauty that made, I, I think of creation in this, beauty that made a heart to adore you. I think of creation. And then beauty that gave this hope of life spent forever with you. I think of creation. I love that verse. Again, our purpose, God wanted to make beings, humans, to know him and then to adore him because he is how good? So good. And, and then we get to spend forever with him. That's God's plan. Wow. And so we sing that. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're my God, not, not anything. You are my God. But then the second verse gets thrown at us, and we see something's gone wrong. So you humbled yourself, and you came to the earth you created, and for love's sake or for our sake became poor. Why? Why? Well, something happened, didn't it? Something happened. We know what happened. We, a lot of us know the story. We know the story of Genesis 3 and how things were made good and we were made to adore God forever, but something happened. And simply put, we chose darkness over light. There's that metaphor, right? Jesus would put it this way, speaking to Nicodemus. Jesus would say, the light has come into the world, but men, meaning humans, men and women, love darkness instead of the light. That's what happened. To, to put it even more simply, there is the way of rightness. There is the way of God. But what do I choose so often? The other way. You know what? And I'm not the only one. Right? And so I live in this world that hurts and stinks and has a lot of shadows because it's what we do. Uh, there's a way that it's right, but we choose the other way. And we exist among chaos and um, we get uh, upset, we get confused, and we, we struggle with sin that we've tried to uh, put aside for so long. <clears throat> I saw this really, um, I, I really appreciated our study of Psalm 38, and it stuck with me. I wanted to read it quickly. And so this is David crying out, uh, Lord, please don't rebuke me in your wrath and don't chasten me in your anger because your arrows have sunk deep into me. My iniquities have gone over my head. You don't have to turn here, but, but this is what David is doing. Lord, you know my desires, verse 9. You know my heart. My sighing has not been hidden from, from you. My heart throbs and my strength fails and the light of my eyes has gone dim. Uh, I'm like a deaf man. Um, I don't feel like crying out to you. We studied in... Uh, the psalm that night. Have you ever felt so bad? You just don't feel like it. I mean, God, it's not that I'm giving up on you. Just I don't know what to say right now, you know. Um, I'm ready to fall. I confess my iniquity. I'm full of anxiety because of my sins. Um, but I love verse 15. The psalmist says, David here says, but I'm going to hope in you. I'm going to hope in you. Oh, man, I love that. I'm going to hope in you. This is what I want you to consider this week. Real simple. I wanted to be simple today. I want you to consider Jesus as the light of the world. Isn't that simple? If you take anything from it this morning, I just want you to think more about Jesus as the light of the world. And I challenge you to see light this week and to see him and to be renewed to walk in him and to, and to refuse wickedness, to refuse evil, to refuse these, these harboring of bad thoughts. To walk in the light of Jesus, that hope that the psalmist mentions in 38. But you are my hope. You see, Jesus becomes this, this um, Jesus becomes the, the metaphor perfectly. <laughs> The metaphor of light perfectly displayed in Jesus, the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'd simply like us to consider Jesus as the light of the world this week. And the neat thing is, it's the perfect week for it. It's not going to be that hard to do. You're going to see light everywhere this week. You are.
It's the best week for it, perhaps. Let me, let me explain. And so it's a special day coming up this week, right? You all know what this special day is? It's called, you ready? The winter solstice. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it's called the winter solstice. You weren't expecting that, perhaps. And um, so the word solstice, it's not pagan. So calm for a minute. It's not. Uh, it's Latin, actually. It just means the, the standing still of the sun. Okay, isn't that cool? And um, like I said, its origin is not pagan. It's actually just how God created the universe. You know, it's how God created our solar system. Um, it's amazing. It's, it's things like this that I read and I see pictures of, and I think I tried to put an image up there for you guys. Thank you. Like, it's, it, it, you know, you, you've heard the things before, how, how if the earth was tilted just a little bit this way or a little bit that way, or if its orbit swung a little bit too far, or a little bit in, like, I mean, things like, like the solstice just make me praise God. Um, and I, I wrote down some words because I knew I'd mess this up. The winter solstice is the time of year when we experience the lowest amount of sunlight in the northern hemisphere and, and the highest amount of darkness, right? It's when the days are, are the shortest, the daylight is the shortest. And that's because, I'll have trouble with this one, but that's because the sun's direct path is at Earth's lowest latitudinal point. Did you get that? All right. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be dark on the, uh, the, the 21st Tuesday, right? It'll be the darkest day of the year. And so um, it's, actually, it's actually kind of a good thing, right? Why would, we, why would we call that a good thing? Because of what follows the winter solstice, the days start to get what? Yeah, at least the daylight starts to get longer. And aren't you thankful for that? Because I don't know, I've not met any of you that enjoy long days of darkness, <laughs> you know, somebody perhaps does, and that's cool if that's your thing, but, you know, we're ready for the sun to come back, for the sun to stop standing still, so to speak, and to come back, right? And so uh, this day has, has often been celebrated. We, we are thankful for this day. And again, like I said, we can recognize this as God's creation. It's not pagan at all. It's uh, celestial mechanics, someone called it this week. I thought that was cool, celestial mechanics. Um, it reminded me of Psalm 19, another wonderful psalm. The heavens, right, are telling of the glory of God. The heavens are telling of the wonder of a creator, right? Their expanse declares tilts and equinox and solstice and seasons, and their expanse declares the work of his hands. You can think this is random if you want, but I, I heard some way, somebody say one time, I think it takes more faith to think this is just by chance. Day to day pours forth speech. Again, this idea of daytime. Day to day just pours forth speech, whether it's long periods of daylight or short. They scream the speech of God's creative power. Night and night reveal the knowledge of God's creative power. It's, it's amazing. And so again, we believe that the God of the Bible, that the God who inspired these words created the earth and all of the universe and established all of the paths of the sun and all of the solstices and all of the seasons and the equinoxes, and it's amazing. Okay, but sadly, and you're probably aware of this, sadly throughout history, many have hijacked this day from our God. They have, okay? Um, and they've credited other gods or gods that, that they haven't known. Uh, some today just celebrate it as happenstance. Huh, it's just cool. It's convenient. The days start getting longer. They credit no god. All right? So the glory of our God has been hijacked. This has been taking place for a long, long time. Okay? That upsets me. It, it, perhaps it, it upsets you uh, that, that, that some would just celebrate something so amazing and not, not praise our God. Uh, sometimes it makes me pretty upset, actually, and it makes me feel pretty dark and pretty hopeless. And uh, sometimes I have to get away from those arguments, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's hard to engage people that don't I love the God that you love. But uh, you don't have to be engaging people like that. Um, 
in order to feel pretty dark. Some of you probably feel pretty dark now just anyway. You know what? Um, it's been a hard go. Um, I have not met anybody that hasn't said that about the experiences of the past couple of years or so. It's been rough. Um, um, <laughs> I thought of a few ways to describe this or try to relate this to you. Um, another lady's not here this morning who gave me a pair of socks that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> some of you may know she gave me some special socks. And, and they're special because they're, they're in memory, socks in memory of, of, of someone I loved and someone we all loved here. And so, um, you know, it's not hard for us to jump into, um, let me say this, it's not hard for any of us to relate to darkness, right? To shadows, to things that just aren't good. Um, and maybe some of you are feeling that darkness more than you ever have. And, and <laughs> you're needing, you're wanting light. You're needing, you're wanting a sunrise, Right? Um, you're wanting something to peek through the darkness and to, and to give you hope, all right? Um, I, I, I think about uh, some people who were waiting for a Messiah in the Old Testament. About a year ago, a little bit longer, I really started digging into these folks that were waiting for a Messiah in the, in the Old Testament prophets. Some of you may remember those lessons. You probably don't because they were like Haggai, Malachi lessons. I know they were tough. But in these people, I found people that wanted so much for the Messiah to show up. You know what? They wanted things to stop being dark, right? And so, man, they, they screamed at God, and they screamed at each other, and they, they longed and longed and longed for Messiah. One of them was Malachi, and he wrote something um, that I have so appreciated in Malachi 4, he said, we're longing essentially for the son of righteousness to come forth with healing in its wings. I love that. The son of righteousness to come forth with healing in its wings. We'll experience the darkest day of the year this week. Some of us are feeling pretty dark right now, just in general. But we're also going to experience another day this week, too, aren't we? You're going to be right this time. What's that day? It's Christmas. That's right. We'll celebrate Christmas this week. And, and I know, um, I know that, 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 that some of, of our religious tradition, some of us, um, are very uncomfortable attaching Christmas to Jesus. I, I know that, and I have uh, accepted that. And, and to be honest with you, I've heard probably uh, a lot of reasons why we shouldn't attach December 25th to Jesus. But I don't recall ever, ever hearing a message to our people that indicated why maybe we should. Maybe it's an excellent time of year to celebrate light. Maybe it's an excellent time of year to consider the sunrise from on high who comes with healing in its wings. You know what? I've never heard a lot of that talk. The story of God, if you will, is the story of solstice. It really is. The whole thing. I told you about it just a minute ago. It's the story of God penetrating the darkness with his light. It's the, it's the story of the darkness being over. It's the story of light emerging from darkness. And I already said it, and that is perfected in the life of Jesus. The sunrise that Malachi prophesied of in Malachi 4, turn with me here to Luke 1. Turn with me here to Luke 1. The next place that we see, now listen now, the next place that we see the sunrise from on high mentioned in our Bibles is in Luke chapter 1 and verse 78, okay? And this is how the Bible works. This is not by chance. We need to, 
it's really good for us to understand this, that the Bible is one story, and it's all so connected, okay? And so there is no doubt in my mind. In fact, it, it is, I, I almost want to say it's 100% right here <laughs> that what Luke is recording of this man's speech or prayer named Zacharias is directly related to what the final prophecy in Scripture of the Old Testament mentioned. A sunrise, a hope, a light penetrating darkness. And this is how he did it, okay? This is Luke chapter 1, beginning in 67. Um, I love that we have mixed a blend of people here. Some of you may not know anything about this, and that's great. Um, time to walk in that path of rightness. Um, Zacharias is the father of a guy we call John the Baptist, okay? And, and Zacharias is a Jew, and he's a priest, and he knows the Messiah prophecies. He knows them. I guarantee you he knows them. He probably has the Messianic prophecies memorized, okay? And so when he hears that his son will be this forerunner for Messiah, that his son John will be the precursor of this Christ, Savior, King, this is what he said, okay? Verse 68, blessed, first off, verse 67, filled with the Spirit. Verse 68, he says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us. Jump into this language. We've been in darkness waiting for a king, but now we see this light. He's visited us. He's accomplished redemption for his people. He's raised up this horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. And he spoke by the mouth of his prophets from old. Remember, he knows these guys. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy toward our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of the enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and rightness or righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, referring to his son here, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will be, go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give to his people the knowledge of salvation for the forgiveness of their sins. And I love 78. This is so good. Because of the tender mercy of God with which the sunrise from on high will visit us and shine upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet unto the way of peace. Luke knew exactly what he was doing in recording this. And that's why just a few words and verses later, read it with me. This is chapter 2, verse 8 or 7. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes. And she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Humbly you came to the earth you created. I got to keep reading. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the field and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Could we say, I bring you light? For today in the city of David there has been born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Man, I wish I could see this next part. Suddenly... There appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Um, we've converted that to song. I think that's our next song, our next slide, actually. Um, 
Uh, I've never given a lot of emphasis to this verse of Hark the Herald Angels, but, but listen to what the author of this song was doing. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. That's a quote from Isaiah. We probably know that in reference to the birth of the one who will be called Wonderful, Master, Savior, Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Where did he get that from? Malachi. Light and life. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing. I'm pointing to mine. Healing <laughs> in his wings. Where did he get that? Malachi. Uh, some of you may not, not like that song so much. Let me tell you how crazy God works. Uh, some of you know Lauren Daigle, right? So I'm riding to the building this morning pretty early. And, and I, I always try to be honest with you guys, you know, a season where you just need some light. You need it. I, maybe it's because it's solstice. I don't know. You just need some light. Uh, you pray, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't want to give in, you don't want to give up, you want to be steadfast, you just need some light, God. And uh, so this song comes on the radio, and I thought, I thought, this must be a new song. I did, I've never heard this song. This is a new song, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just thanking God for a song I've never heard at a moment when it was really cool to hear, you know. And... Um, The world is waiting for a miracle, and the heart longs for a little bit of hope. O come, O come, Emmanuel. A, tri a child prays for peace on earth. She's calling out from a sea of hurt. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And can you hear the angels singing, glory to the light of the world. The light of the world is here. The drought breaks with the tears of a mother. And a, baby, a baby's cry is the sound of love. Come down, come down, Emmanuel. Oh, he is the song for the suffering. He is the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. He has come, Emmanuel. For all who wait, for all who hunger, for all who've prayed, for all who wonder, behold your King, blessed Messiah, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Man, I get in my office. That song was released in 2016. How have I never heard that song? We're about to wrap up. Do you want the son of righteousness to come with healing in his wings? Man, I do. And again, I've heard over and over again why it's the wrong time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. I submit to you, maybe it's the right time. You know what? When the world is the most dark, maybe it's the right time. There's a story I once heard about, I don't know if it's true, there's a story I once heard about two parents who gave birth to a child who was diagnosed with illness and a few days later died. They had this birthday that they didn't want to forget. They had this day of death uh, that they didn't want to remember. Well, years later, they adopted a child. And as you do sometimes when you adopt a child, maybe from overseas, you know, you, you, you celebrate a gotcha day. Some of you guys are familiar with a gotcha day, but sometimes you don't know the actual birthday. So parents can choose a birthday. I know a family that did exactly that. And so in thinking about the day to choose to celebrate this child's birth, what do you think they picked? They picked that day where their, their first child had died, changing a day of darkness forever into a day of light. I don't know if Chris, Christmas pagan or whatever, I don't know. But I know this, the darkest day that our hemisphere experiences is because of our creator God, the God of the Bible. And I can't think of a better time, to be honest with you, than for light to emerge, than for the sun to rise with healing in its wings. I was so thankful for Ephesians 5. I want to read it, but I'm, gonna, I'm running, you know. Um, awake, sleeper, 
arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. We took Amelia to see some Christmas lights this week. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure after <laughs> studying this week that the re probably the reason that the tradition of lights at Christmas exists is from Christians trying to redeem this day from paganism. Isn't that cool to think about? We, you, you may put lights on your house this week because of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pro prove me wrong. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm open. I'm not, I'm not daring you. I'm saying maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But So we're seeing these lights this week, and Amelia's loving it, and Clara's loving it. They're hanging out of the sunroof of the car at a place where you could do that, by the way. And I found myself thinking, after we had talked about God being real and the Bible being real, I thought it will be my aim, my aim that she is just as excited about the light of the world as she is these Christmas lights. That's that, that's that journey we'll walk down, okay? And the gospel is this invitation for all of us to walk down that path, you know, of letting this light penetrate the darkness. Why don't you consider that? Think about Jesus this week, the light of the world, okay? Let him, let him in this dark time, all right? We're going to sing about it, Ethan.